Hello and welcome to News Now. Over a hundred people are feared dead following a multiple bomb explosion at the Grand Central Mosque in Kano State, northwestern Nigeria. The explosion occurred Friday afternoon as worshippers were about to begin their Jumat prayers. The mosque is one of the biggest in the Nigerian city of Kano and attracts a huge crowd. Witnesses say the bomb went off at about 2 p.m. before the imam of the mosque, Sani Zaharadin, began his sermon. The police say two suicide bombers blew themselves up inside the mosque while other gunmen opened fire at fleeing worshippers. Another bomb which went off outside the mosque sent worshippers running in all directions. Security have now been cordoned off the area while calm has returned to the city. The attack comes just weeks just a week, I should say, after the Emir of Kano, Mohamedou Sanusi, called on people to defend themselves against militant Islamist Boko Haram. Sanusi was not in the mosque during the attack, as he is said to be away to Saudi Arabia. There's been, no, uh, there's, there's been a series of bomb explosions in different parts of the north of the country over the past week, but no group or persons have claimed responsibilities for the attacks. Suspicion, though, continues to fall on Boko Haram. Meanwhile, President Goodluck Jonathan has condemned the attack and ordered a full-scale investigation. In a statement by his spokesperson, Ruben Abati, the president condoled victims of the attack and directed relief agencies and medical personnel to deploy every possible effort to assist the injured and the general public to heed the call for the donation of blood by hospitals where the injured are being treated. He said his government will continue uh, will continue, of course, to take every step to put an end to terrorism in the country. The Nigerian police have denied responsibility for the poor persecution of Amino Wuche, a chief mastermind of the April 14 bomb blast in a crowded motor park at Nyanya, a suburb in Abuja, the federal capital territory. Now, a federal high court judge in Abuja Monday struck out the two count terrorism charge against Oguche for want of diligent prosecution by the state. Police spokesman Emmanuel Ujuku in a statement said the prosecution of Mr. Oguche was handled by the State Security Service SSS and the Attorney General of the Federation and that the police merely helped with the extradition of the suspect from Sudan. The police statement comes three days after Oguche was declared a free man despite being accused of masterminding the Nyanya bomb attack, which claimed about 75 lives. Many had thought Oguche's persecution would bring succor to the families of the victims of that blast. Ebola survivors and those who lost loved ones uh, to the virus in Nigeria have been given 13 million naira in financial assistance to help them regain what they lost during their ordeal. The government of Lagos State, where the disease was first reported in the country, also handed out about handed out 50 million naira actually to the hospital where the Liberian man Patrick Sawyer, who brought the virus to Nigeria, died. First Consultant Hospital has been battling with some post Ebola challenges. The government says the donation is to help the hospital stay afloat. The fact is that First Consultant Hospital to bore the brunt of this and they've not been able to get back their, their group again. One of the things we decided as a government to do was to show them support. There is no way we can compensate First Consultant or the survivors or the families of the bereaved. There is no way we can fully compensate them as a government. What we are doing here is a gesture of our support by government to show that we care, we appreciate what they did, and we've not forgotten that we will not forget them. We we'll give them all the necessary support. So what we are doing today is just a token of our appreciation by government to show our support. Let me say it again, we cannot compensate them fully for their loss. But we also use the opportunity again to to um, invite other donors, other organizations who may want to show their support. That this is the time for them at least to show this. It shows a certain degree of leadership, seriousness, and was able to support us in our patriotic actions. And we want to use this opportunity to send a message through 
members of the Executive Council to our brother, the Governor of Lagos State. We really appreciated his actions and uh, we want to thank him through you all. The way we react to our own fellows, our own brothers and sisters, it is the way we react that is, it speaks so much to everybody else about who we are. We also want to thank members of my team. I really have so much difficulty talking about my team because we had so many challenges. Well, a very kind gesture there on the part of Lagos State uh, Government. Very nice for them to have done this. Now, Nigeria may be Ebola free, but health authorities say they are not taking chances at all. Lagos State Health Commissioner G.D. Idris says facilities at the center where Ebola patients were treated are being upgraded and that efforts are underway to set up a research and early warning center in the city. Well, the focus is to upgrade that uh, infectious disease center, mainland hospital, Yaba to upgrade in such a way that it be able to adequately address infectious diseases uh, using modern techniques and modern standards. What we've done now, we have a map, a, a, a sketch of that place the way we want it. We're going to divide the place into two for highly infectious disease and the normal infectious disease will represent. In addition, we're going to upgrade the diagnostic facilities both radiological, that is X-ray, what is CT scan, and lab. The lab will be upgraded in such that it can go to get to level, uh, biosafety bio level 4 lab. I can do virology and what, whatever it is they need to do to be able to check this disease. In addition, we're going to have a block for research. We're going to have research offices, research laboratories, conference rooms, and it's going to be our now incident management center, that, uh, our emergency operation center for any, just in case we have any emergencies. Infectious disease emergency. In addition, we're going to have wards, both normal wards and also isolation wards that can handle any modern disease. And that's the plan. Right now, we are starting with the plasma fluorosis unit. And basically, we just take blood from the survivors or who did the thing, check the blood, uh, take whatever it is, we fractionate it, and keep the samples for further tests. The idea is that we want to see whether the serum of patients who survived the disease can be used again, modified to be able to treat new cases or used as um, a I mean, sort of prevention for such services. Uh, we have, we are fortunate to have our assistance at Bill Gates Foundation giving us a mobile lab, just just cleared. And this research core group is a meeting I'm going to now, meetings about our Marshall plans, we know what we want to do. Uh, we start with the, um, the survivors, we start with the plasma process unit, that's the quick ones. The Gates Foundation to have donated two other vehicles to Liberia and Sierra Leone. And those samples again from those places will be sent here. When, now we're sort of build another unit here, a, a final unit here, not a mobile one, a definite unit here. We're using mobile one just as a stopgap. To build up that level. So that place is going to be built in stages, modernized in stages, because it requires a whole lot of money, resources, and that's why we use your project again now. Those people who express their desire to support the state government, federal government in this way, this is the time for them to put their money into these facilities. It's for the benefit of Lagosians, for the benefit of the whole country. Now, the Speaker of Nigerian House of Representatives, Aminu Tambual, has asked the Federal High Court in Abuja to jail the Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Abba, for disobeying a court order. The IGP had last as they ordered police officers to take over the National Assembly and prevent Tambor from entering the complex. Following his defection from the PDP to the APC, Tambor had filed a suit in court to stop any move at all to remove him as Speaker. Justice Ahmed Mohammed, who is trying the case, ordered that all parties should maintain the status quo, implying that Mr. Tambua stays put as speaker till the court takes a decision on the matter. But while appearing before a House committee, the Inspector General of Police argued that Mr. Tambua was no longer speaker. 
Now, lawyer to the Speaker, Latif Fagwemi, a senior advocate of Nigeria, said the Inspector General of Police should be charged for contempt after he directed his men to stop the Speaker from gaining access to the premises of the National Assembly, despite an earlier order by the court that all parties must maintain the status quo pending the determination of the substantive suit seeking interpretation of his status as the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Justice Mohammed ruling on ruling now on the ex parte application ordered Mr. Tambor's counsel to serve the motion on notice on the Inspector General of Police's lawyers for response. The matter has now been adjourned to December the 1st. Nigeria's election regulator, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has rescheduled the distribution of the permanent voters card PVC and the continuous voter registration in six states across the country. INEC says the move is to ensure the effectiveness of the exercise and mitigate difficulties encountered in the previous exercises. The affected states are Lagos, Rivers, Nasara, Kaduna, Katsina, and Niger and Borono, all of which were in the third phase of the exercise alongside seven other states. Chief Press Secretary to INEC Chairman Kayode Dewu in a statement said the decision was reached after a meeting with leaders of the 20, of 22 registered political parties from Niger, Katsina, Rivers, Nasara, Kaduna and Borno, as well as nine local government areas in Lagos State, uh, where which of course were left out in the recently concluded third phase of the program. The commission had now says the distribution exercise in Rivers and Nasara states and the remaining nine local government areas and rivers in Lagos, I should say now, will begin Friday, Friday November 28th and end Saturday, November 30th, while the continuous voters' registration will take place between Wednesday, December 3rd and Monday, December 8th. National Chairman of Nigeria's main opposition, All Progressives Congress, John Odigi Oyegun, has asked, has said all aspirants seeking the party's presidential ticket will have to sign an undertaking during their screening exercise. Oyegun said all the aspirants are required to sign to faithfully implement the party's manifesto from the day they assume office. The APC chairman was speaking when he received the Kano State Governor, Rabi Okwankoso, who had come to submit his presidential expression of interest and nomination forms to contest for the presidency at the party's secretariat in Abuja. He expressed confidence that the party's manifesto, which is people-oriented, will improve the lot of Nigerians if carefully and faithfully implemented. Aside from Kwankwaso, former head of state Muhammad Buhari, former vice president Atiku Abubakar, and chairman of the leadership newspaper Sam Nda Isaiah, will be contesting the presidency under the platform of the All Progressives Congress. Former Minister of Works, uh, Minister of Works now, State Minister of Works, Chris Ogienwani, has defected to the All Progressives Congress, APC. Egoewani, who was formerly a minister under President Goodluck Jonathan, will be joining the Edo State governorship race in 2016. He said he was motivated by the performance of the APC and the state governor in transforming the state and promised to build on it if elected governor. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we'll look at business stories as well as the foreign scene. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. Nigeria's Foreign Minister Ngozi Okonjewala has been responding to analysts who say the country's revised budget benchmark of $73 per barrel of crude oil is overly optimistic. Now, some analysts have argued that the figure should have been brought down further. But Okonjewala said the economic team has adopted the best approach in managing the economy, assuring that even if oil prices dropped to $60 per barrel, the country will still be on a sound footing. The minister was speaking at the Securities and Exchange Commission 4th Annual Capital Market Committee retreat in Abuja. We have taken a scenario-based approach, which is the right thing to do. 
since we cannot tell at this moment whether it's going to fall to 60, to 65, to 70, or even go up, we should be prepared for these scenarios. That's the important point I want to make. People should not get fixated on the $73. It's just the midpoint of the range we have. If it falls to $70, we are ready with additional measures. We have organized a set of measures around 73, which I'll talk about. But we have additional measures that will bring in at $70 a barrel. We have further measures at 65, and we have a third set of measures at 60. So I just want to, re re to reassure all those analysts who feel that 73, in fact, I saw in the papers yesterday, and I, I spoke to the central bank governor, you know, the, the, what was quoted, uh, 73 may be optimistic. What he was trying to signal to the country was that, because we're very much in this together, that they should be ready that it could go below 73. That's the interpretation of what he was trying to say, not anything else. And it is true. That's why we have these three scenarios worked out. And the specific measures, what would we, how much more, and where would we raise additional revenue to deal with the situation? What expenditure cuts would we make? These are the specific measures that we have. So please rest assured that if oil prices fall to 70, we have the measures. If they fall to 65, we have the measures. If they fall to 60, we have the measures. We have not yet done a scenario at 40. <laughs> and of course, let's hope it doesn't get to 40. Let's just hope it doesn't get to 40 because that wouldn't be funny at all. Now, Nigeria has saved 171.85 billion in the past five years through the scrutiny of technology transfer agreements between organizations in Nigeria and foreign entities, the federal government has said. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Abdul Bulama, who was speaking Thursday at the 2014 ministerial platform in Abuja, said the National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion has been scrutinizing applications to technology acquisition from operators in the Nigerian economy, adding that the exercise had led to the huge savings. Bulama said uh, on a year-by-year -year basis, 13.01 billion naira was saved in 20, 2009, 94.42 billion naira in 2010, 28.56 billion in 2011, 8.46 billion in 2012, and 27.4 billion in 2013. He said the intervention of NOTAB has led to financial savings for the country, which would have been unremitted due to uh, over-invoicing of technology transfer fees. To the foreign scene now, French President Francois Hollande is visiting Guinea on the first trip by a Western leader to a country at the center of the latest Ebola outbreak. Hollande said France had to support Guinea in the fight against the virus. More than 1,200 people have died of Ebola in Guinea, which is to trial a test to diagnose Ebola. The outbreak is now stable in the West African nation, the World Health Organization said last week. France has pledged 100 million euros to help tackle the disease by opening several care centers in Guinea, a, French, a former French colony. After Guinea, President Holland will fly to Senegal to take part in a summit of French-speaking leaders. This latest outbreak of the virus has killed more than 5,600 people who have actually died in the latest outbreak with Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia, the worst heat. To sports now, Super Eagles coach Stephen Keshi is set to sign a new contract with the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF. The federation has said an executive member of the NFF board, Emeka Nyama, told Newsman Friday that Keshi is to be served with a new contract based on the recommendations of the technical committee to the federation. Keshi, who was sacked and reinstated to the team, failed to qualify Nigeria for the 2015 Cup of Nations after leading the team to win the 2013 edition of the tournament. He had also failed to get the Super Eagles to qualify for the African Cup of Nations after they were defeated by South Africa in their last Group D game. By the way, that African Cup of Nations will be played in Equatorial Guinea in January. Well, should I say congratulations to Stephen Keshi? Well, 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 well. 
I reserve my comments. Now, after weeks of speculations, Ghana has now appointed Avram Grant as the new coach of the country's national team. The former Chelsea boss signed a 27-month deal to take over from Maxwell Konadu, who had been in temporary charge as coach for the Black Stars since Kwesi Apia left in September. The 59-year-old will start work on Monday and his contract will end by February 2017 after that year's African Cup of Nations finals. Israeli Grant has only six weeks to prepare the Black Stars for the 2014 Nations Cup in Equatorial Guinea. However, GFA President Kwesi Nyatekie said it would be unfair to ask a coach appointed only one month before a tournament to win a trophy. The GFA president, however, said the FA will assess his performance after the Nations Cup and determine whether he has done well or not. Ghana, who topped their qualification group for next year's showpiece, will find out their opponents in Equatorial Guinea when the draw is made December 3. The tournament will be held between January 17th and uh, the 8th of February. Well, that's it uh, on news now for now. We thank you very much for watching. We're back again shortly.